thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving the junior members of this committee the glorious opportunity of sharing the pain of this inquiry. My faith in the Constitution is whole. It is complete. It is total. And I'm not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the subversion and the destruction of the Constitution. The nature of impeachment, a narrowly channeled exception to the separation of powers maxim. The Federal Convention of 1787 said it is to be used only for high crimes and misdemeanors. Common sense would be revolted if we engaged upon the process for petty reasons. Pettiness cannot be allowed to stand up in the face of overwhelming problems. So today, we are not being petty. We are trying to be big because the task we have before us is a big one. The Constitution charges the president with the task of taking care that the laws be fully executed. And yet President Nixon has counseled his aides to commit per perjury, to willfully disregard the secrecy of the grand jury proceedings, conceal surreptitious entry, and attempt to conspire and compromise a federal judge. A president is impeachable if he attempts to subvert the Constitution. If the impeachment proceedings in the Constitution of the United States will not reach the offenses charged here today, then perhaps the 18th century Constitution should be abandoned into a 20th century paper shredder. Has the president committed offenses and planned and directed and acquiesced in the course of conduct with the constitution will not tolerate? That is the question. We know that. We know the question. We should now forthwith proceed to the proceedings to answer the question. It is reason and not passion which must guide our deliberations, guide our debate, and guide our decision. I hear forth yield back my time, Mr. Chairman.